Hello, this is The Sun Tarot by Christopher Butler. It's mysticism, meditation, and divination for gay men. Um, so this is a set that you can get from um, Schiffer Red Feather. And here it is. So let's look at it. I'll get the cards out. There we go. So we have a um, magnetic clasp box, and here's the reverse. So it has some pictures of the cards designed for the needs of gay men specifically, um, and uh, created by a gay man for gay men. The Sun Tarot celebrates who we are and all the richness that entails. Um, so when I originally uh, looked at this deck, it really reminded me of the Cosmic Tribe Tarot, um, which just had that sort of feel. Um, there's the Schiffer. Um, and the reverse, um, <laughs> if you remember the U.S. version of um, Queer's Folk, it reminds me of sort of the, um, on the DVD version of the first season, it had these sort of dancing figures. This is what it reminds me of. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. It's kind of, it's reversible, but it's like, I don't know, it's this, this sort of energy. So here's the booklet. And the book is, uh, it's black and white. So you can see that the, it has pictures of each card. And there's actually quite a bit written about each card. So let's read about he says uh, the author said he began the second on his 38th birthday back in 2005 um, and he um, had seen the gay tarot by Los Carabeo and I actually have uh, talked about that um, Cards. They have traditional suits, traditional cards, meanings. It says through its dreamlike, colorful images, the Sun Terra opens a door to a world where gay men can explore their relationships, friendships, sexuality, and just as importantly, their spirituality. The book is written as a guide to you through these images, giving you the tools to perform a variety of readings, encouraging you to forge your own ways of exploration. Um, a celebration of true masculinity and an invitation to experience that amazing quality enshrined within yourself. And then it just goes on about the tarot. So there's the book. It is um, it's 207 pages. I actually have emailed the creator of the deck and for an interview but he um, he's been really busy um, and um, we've we're gonna see if we can work something out in the new year because I think it'll be interesting to talk to him so let's look at the deck there we go so um, this is a photo sort of photo collage, very um, very graphic sort of um, deck um, with lots of images that sort of evoke, um, you know, different meanings um, aside from traditional tarot. So here's the fool. We have a man, the face looks like a clown almost. We have flamingos. So here's uh, an example of the sort of the the real figure um, that he uses. So he uses a picture and it's the work he does. Um, so we have a person, the magician, here. Two is the mystic. 
I love the shading here, um, sort of the pattern here going on. The Bountiful is three. The Emperor. So we have a figure in the foreground, we have the eagle, the rams, here's the hierophant. Now this one has the, we have a person in the background, but this drawing, sort of the Vitruvian man, there, papal keys, different religions represented. Lovers. The chariot. Sort of some weird Stretching here, pulling reins. Strength, we have the lion, we have a face there. The hermit. This card has a, has a pretty, I think it, for me, it has a significant meaning because I think a lot of us feel like we're alone in the world and we have a failure to connect with others and we do feel like hermits um, quite a bit. And you see how the background is almost like this interwoven forest of, of sort of darkness and tangles and, and the lights coming from within. The Wheel of Fortune. This one looks a little cartoony to me. I mean, it's got like some strange images, like the skull and crossbones, radiation. Um, a little odd for a Wheel of Fortune card. We have Justice. The spheres are really interesting here. We have the elements on either side balancing out. Four swords. We have the Hanged Man, fairly simplistic, upside down. This one's kind of creepy. You have this sort of specter on the skull horse. Two men, um, sort of asleep, and there's a ship in the foreground, which actually I just noticed, having looked at the cards, it's sort of going away, very ghostly. Temperance. And the devil. So this one, it's, we see pain, we see hands, clenching, eye, Grabbing sort of upside down eyes here. And the Tower of Destruction. This one's a really interesting card because it reminds me of almost like a a James Bond um, intro montage, um, especially with the figures. But yet the dove flying off. Here the star. The moon. Here we have the dog, the wolf, the two towers. Blue the crabs right there. 
hands, moon, pink triangles. the sun. And the zodiac surrounding the sun. Two men, the birds. Last judgment. This one's really like, I mean, it's really worked. Lots of layers. We have greenish blue people reaching out. Sort of butterfly eyes. Person in the middle. the world. I believe the man who, who seems to be most most photographed is the author, but I'm not certain. Um, I don't believe the book says, so let's look at the world. Yeah, it doesn't say we go into the different suits. We have pentacles, we have swords, wands, and cups. You can see they're very, the cards are extremely colorful. So if you like colorful decks, this one's definitely colorful. So ace of pentacles. Notice the green, sort of haziness, the grass growing. Two. Three. This one's one of those cards where it's like it's, it really is like the, um, one that it stands out almost because of the sort of there's no figures depicted. Here we have a figure. Face, that background. Whenever I see checkerboard, the first time I really saw checkerboard used a lot was like in Super Mario Brothers 3. I'm like, there's checkerboard. You know, you see it in houses and all, but just see it like depicted, um, and and like, oh my God, it's in a castle. Um, it always stands out. It always reminds me of that. Fine. Here we see a person here. Sometimes the people don't really pop right out. They're kind of pushed in the background. Here we have snowflakes. Starry wheels kind of falling. I like this one, like it's looking through the trees. Kind of, there's stuff in the background, people in the background, you can barely see it. And we have a compass, a man. We have a speedometer here. Sort of a modern touch. Ah, the peacock. And a butterfly. Well, you know, the peacock is when you, especially when you're referring to males, usually it refers to vanity, um, narcissism, showing off. Um, well, this is a nine card, so it's kind of doesn't quite fit, I don't think. Ah, uh, here we have the Tree of Life, two men. Ace of Swords, Air. Lightning, Two of Swords, with 
three of swords, and there's a heart. It's got an eye in it. Three of swords is always one of those cards where you gravitate towards it. You're like, I know what it looks like. You know, it's a heart stabbed with three. Um, just to, you know, like, let me see what this deck is, is how it's establishing symbolism. Here we have four, reclining male. <laughs> the guy is actually giving the other guy the middle finger, defeat, or sort of a pompous gesture. We have a swan, a ship, the birds, swords in the ocean. Seven. There's a fox in the background. Eight. There's a face right there. Nine. It's a man grabbing his face. Of course, this is the card of torment. Caught in a spider web. Ten. Um, sort of a drowned man, stabbed. But this card inherently doesn't look like it's so foreboding. Hmm. Oh, I should say that. The court cards are in the back. I completely missed that. There's a man's face there. The cat. So we'll get to the court cards. Four. Five. This one reminds me of the, um, I don't know, like the 1980s sort of neon. That dripping reminds me of, of, um, Paint splatter, swiggles, ejaculate. Um, this one's really colorful. There's some sort of measuring thing like you'd see in an airplane, like altitude. And there's a plane, yeah, there's a jet plane there. And then there's a symbol for military. Stars, rainbow, seven, eight. And this one, it's oh, here we see a fist. The man there, the sort of indignant fight. The wind outside is really going crazy. I can hear it howling. Here we have a man bent over with sort of the world on his shoulders. And now we jump to cups. The two of cups. Which actually it looks like the figure, yeah, it's the same figure that's used on the back.
screen. Four. Five. This one's a very different, sort of an ancient background, sort of a desert scene. Here we have a passport stamp. What does it say? It says something Ville, New Mexico, January 1983. Face looking out. Ooh. All the cups. All the choices, all the temptations. I think this is probably the most nudity you'll see in this deck right here. Just the rear end of that guy. Remember the moon, the cups. But the color palette really does remind me of the, um, the Cosmic Tribe Tarot. Ten. And all the cups. So, the court cards are separated. Herald, Knight, Prince, and King. So they're all male figures. So we have Pentacles. So the Herald, the Page, the Knight, the Prince, and then the King. And we have a face there, we have branches, really very earthy, Sarnunos, Herald of Swords. It says something about the summon, the sum of the power in the, of the equation. I can hardly read the, the text there. Knight of Swords, here we have a butterfly. Here's some little scissors right there. Prince of Swords. The King of Swords here. Then we go in Wands. Almost like he's trapped behind a club. Knight of Wands. Prince of Wands. King of Wands. We have sort of a cathedral in the city. It reminds me of St. Patrick's in New York City. Then we go to Cups. The Herald of Cups. This is on the cover of the book, The Knight of Cups. Prince of Cups, here we have the Tree of Life again. And the King of Cups. Get the ship again. The elemental symbol. And there we go. So that's the deck. The size of this deck is interesting. Um, it's sort of a, it's a squat, you know, I call this a squarish deck. It's not uh, skinny and long. Um, it has some weight to it. The cards are fairly easy, very shiny. Um, 
seems like they'd be fairly easy to shuffle. Um, I think there was a decent job done on that. Um, they're interesting cards. Um, so it seems like these this deck is fairly geared towards gay men, of course. Um, but I think anybody could could use it. You don't have to be a gay male, or you could be doing it for a gay male. It'd be using it. Um, but it. Um, Oh, it's 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 a very it seems like it's a very easy to use deck overall. Um, lots to look at. But, I mean, there's so much in each picture. The symbols, the layers. It's easy to miss stuff because when I flip through it, I'd miss stuff until I saw it again, or maybe I just didn't remember it. Um, but it's definitely a unique deck. Um, any of the other decks that are geared towards specific communities of humans um, can be a little off-putting for, for other people. So obviously if I have a lesbian couple I'm reading for this deck, they probably would, would wonder what the hell am I doing? So it wouldn't quite fit. But for a male client or for um, a male couple, a gay man, a bisexual man, um, I think this deck would work fairly well. Hmm. Anyway, so that's the Sun Tarot by Christopher Butler, published by Schiffer Red Feather. Um, thank you, Schiffer Red Feather, for this review deck. I really appreciate it. It's a lovely deck. I'm going to go ahead and put them back in their little box. There's some cardboard inserts to kind of keep things where they are. I'm actually going to take a picture so I can put it on Instagram. Let's see, what's a cool card? Of course I put them all back and I'm like, I should take a picture. Maybe I'll just leave the cards in here. I'll put the book here with the box. And then I have, let's see, I got the Schiffer card, which of course is good. Maybe the back of the card too. I'll just put it like it's a mystery. Like you don't know what the cards are. But anyway, that's me going through the Sun Tarot. Um, it's currently available. And um, I don't know. If you're interested in using it, definitely check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Other Schiffer books. If you go to shifferbooks.com, um, this is the Schiffer Publishing website. And you can go to books by subject, there's paranormal, UFO, folklore, as well as my favorite, tarot and oracle, um, and see what they have. There really is a little bit of everything here, so, and there's lots to look at, so please check that out. Thank you.